Hi, I'm Adam. Welcome to What's Up with Adam Tilted, a weekly look at what's interesting in the, in the night sky, the past, present, and future of space exploration, and some general science concepts to help you better understand the universe around you. So, let's jump right in. What's up? This week is a big week for space history. On Wednesday, the 12th, in 1961, Yuri Gagarin became the first human in space. 1961, that's not that long ago. We haven't been spacefaring for very long. Tomorrow, the 11th, in 1970, the ill-fated Apollo 13 mission launched. And we know how that one went. Um, and on Friday the 14th, back in 1981, the very first space shuttle mission landed. That was STS-1, and that was the Columbia shuttle. Sky watching. What's up in the night sky? A lot of cool things this week. First, tonight, Jupiter and the moon are going to put on a little show for us. And I'm going to hop over here and show you what that's going to look like with the simulation I have. So give me just a moment. And while I'm setting up this simulation, uh, I want to say first thanks for joining. And I will be here every week at 10 a.m. Central. Um, so if you have questions, you can leave them in the comments. <clears throat> you can email them to me at adamtilted at gmail.com. And um, I will try to get to them either in this broadcast or next week. So the um, pairing of the moon and Jupiter. So I've got this, let me switch this around for a second. Okay, um, so this is tonight at about nine o'clock. And you can see it's still kind of low in the sky, but the moon and Jupiter, actually this is yesterday, let me fix that. This is today. You see the moon and Jupiter are very close to each other. They're two degrees apart in the sky. And this is all in the constellation Virgo. The star Spica is pretty bright, so you should be able to see that pretty easily. Um, this is low in the eastern sky just after sunset. As the night goes on, uh, that will rise higher and higher up into the sky. And um, all the way up until sunrise. The next day. Morning. All right, so, um, sorry, I knew that was going to happen. Jake. The joys of live broadcasting. Okay. The cat is outside. All right, so tonight, uh, look up after dark, find the moon. You'll see Jupiter nearby and Spica. Um, and you'll also know that that is where the constellation Virgo is. Tomorrow, tomorrow morning at 2.08 a.m. Eastern Time, the moon reaches full. So, um, the, that means that the moon is on behind us and the sun is in front of us. We can see the entire side of the moon that is being lit by the sun. Um, typically, that is the worst time to stargaze because the 
light from the full moon kind of washes everything out. Even Jupiter, um, which is, Jupiter I think is the third brightest object we can see. Um, the moon, Venus, then Jupiter. But even Jupiter will be a little washed out by the full moon tomorrow. Um, and the full moon is actually not the best time to look at it through telescope or binoculars too because it is so bright. Uh, the best time to do that is when it's in a crescent. And we'll talk about that later. But uh, full moon tomorrow morning, 2.08 a.m. Eastern Time, to be precise. On Saturday, the moon is going to be at Apogee. And that means that it is going to be at its point in orbit that it's furthest away from us. It doesn't orbit the Earth in a perfect circle. It's more of an ellipse. So sometimes it's closer, sometimes it's further away. On Saturday, it reaches the point where it's furthest away from us. And that means that it will look a little smaller, but you're not going to notice. Unless you have the two moons right next to each other for comparison, you're not going to really notice a difference. On Sunday, we have another interesting pairing, this time with the moon and Saturn. So let's take a look at that in the simulation. And Sa Sunday is the 16th. You'll see the moon's getting lower and lower in the sky. Can't even see it now. So I'm going to have to move time ahead, and there you can see. So in order to see this pairing, you're going to have to stay up late. It'll rise in the east around uh, 2 a.m. Central Time, or you can see it uh, in the southwest just before sunrise if you get up before the sun rises. So those are some cool pairings. The, um, the moon will be at, let's see, it'll be at, eh, it'll be almost a, a quarter. So it's not gonna wash out Saturn too much. Saturn is not very bright, but it does have a distinct yellow coloring to it. So if you know where it is and you know what you're looking for, you can usually find it. So on Sunday uh, or Monday morning, um, look at the moon and see if you can find Saturn. It'll be south about three degrees. Okay, so moving on to news. Well, let me just, before I do that, I'm going to just look through these comments and make sure that... I've answered any questions. Okay, great. Oh, good. My email address is down there in the comments. Excellent. Uh, so you can send questions for next week's show to that email address, adamtilted.com. All right, space news. We had some good news this week. Three astronauts safely returned to Earth this morning in Kazakhstan after spending 173 days on the International Space Station. Can you imagine that? I mean, I would love to go to the space station, but that's a long time. I imagine they have to go through some sort of reacclimation once they're back on Earth after all that time. Um... Also in space news, NASA recently unveiled their plans, their new plans for getting humans to Mars. And the, the timeline is about the 2030s. Uh, this plan has two phases, which I think is interesting. The first one is called the Deep Space Gateway. And it's a small space station, basically, that will orbit the moon. It will serve as a port of call for astronauts that are going to and coming from Mars. It'll also um, have the capability to position itself for uh, spacecraft to land on the moon, I believe is part of their plan. 
The second part is the development of the deep space transport. That is a, a spacecraft that will support up to four crew members for about a thousand days. The idea is that the transport will dock with the gateway, will be fueled, supplied, ready to go, and then the transport will orbit the moon for a year with the crew inside, just to make sure everything's cool. It'll redock with the gateway, get resupplied, refueled, refurbished, ready for its trip to Mars, and then they'll go off to Mars. And then when they come back from Mars, um, they will redock with the gateway, and it'll be uh, that the transport will be all fixed up and ready to go in between trips. I guess like they they used to do with airplanes. Remember, they used to clean up the trash. After, I don't think they do that anymore, but they used to clean up the trash after the last people. So I think that's uh, of what what their plan is. I'm very interested to see how this goes. Part of the problem that NASA has with planning big projects like this is the way they are funded. They're funded through Congress, and Congress's priorities change, as do presidents. And, you know, when you are planning a space program, you are talking decades. And that can be, you know, three, four presidents, and who knows how many different combinations of people in Congress that either do or don't want to fund this. So it's hard to... It's hard to fund it. It's hard to do it if you don't know that the money is going to come. But let's hope. Uh, the good news is that we've got a lot of private space companies, such as SpaceX, that are also going to be um, helping with this effort. So that's good news. Okay. That's what's up this week. And I look forward to seeing you next week. If you want more information about space and science and the other things that I'm interested in, be sure to check out my blog at adamtilted.com. And I will see you next week right here on Bubbler Media at 10 a.m. Central on Monday for another episode of What's Up with Adam Tilted. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to look up.